Welcome back to Leading Edge. I mentioned off the top of the show that Governor Mike DeWine, despite getting some high marks for his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, has seen his own party move to limit the authority of the governor's hand-picked health director. And yes, some have even spoken of, you ready? Impeachment. And again, most of the heat isn't coming from across the aisle, but we're going to go across the aisle from my next guest, State Representative Lisa Sebecki, um, represents District 45 in Toledo. Good to see you. I'm glad you're well. Um, what's this I read where you guys this week are called in this session? There are no social distancing measures, and most of the GOP members refuse to wear a mask. What is going on down there? Well, um, Jerry, you'd actually have to ask the House Speaker, uh, but we do have some social distancing um, in place within our committee meetings uh, as put out by the House Speaker. Do I think it's social distancing? No. Uh, we have been spread out in our hearing rooms, and there's a second hearing room for our guests um, that are coming in to testify on bills. But what I say it's not really social distancing is because I can be sitting in my spot that's mm -hmm. been assigned to me, but directly behind me could be a house member um, that may not be wearing a mask. Uh, yeah. But um, and then on our house floor last week, we had more social distancing than this week when we came back. So I, I kind of see maybe a resurgence of us all in the house chambers. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of predicting probably by next week. All right. The vote in the House that was taken to limit any order from the health director to a maximum of 14 days. What is that about? And as a non-elected official, does she maybe have more power than she should? Well, actually, Jerry, she was, um, Dr. Amy Acton was hired by the governor right. uh, to be her health director. And actually, I believe she's the first female um, health director in the state of Ohio. And, um, you know, I, I understand that people are anxious to get back to work. They're anxious to come out of um, the stay at home order. I, I totally understand that. But Dr. Amy Acton has been, and along with the governor, that has one of the highest approval ratings, my understanding, of all governors in the, in the United States, even higher than our current president. Uh, but you know, she has been working diligently and giving advice to the governor. And, and we've all seen her on those two o'clock briefings. And I have to say that Dr. Amy Acton has done a, a yeoman's job at looking out for the 11.5 million Ohioans. Well, you know, one of your colleagues, I don't know if this has happened yet, you can tell me, was proposing legislation that would re reduce any health director's mandates to become simply suggestions which would have to be approved by the legislature. Do they not see down there the polls that show by an overwhelming majority, Americans trust the professionals, trust the doctors over politicians, no disrespect intended? Um, I, I'm not sure what news articles and what, um, what they're reading, but I can tell you what I'm looking at and what I'm reading is that overwhelmingly, um, you know, Ohio citizens and even across the United States, they are um, agreeing with the health directors and on their guidance and what they have been doing. And what, you know, what was interesting last week um, when we were down in Columbus, um, taking that vote on amended bill, Senate Bill 1, actually that amendment came through the committee of which I sat on. Okay. And there wasn't one hearing. There wasn't anyone that came in to testify. There wasn't that opportunity to ask questions. And the other interesting fact is when my colleagues across the aisle are taking this vote, not one, of, not one colleague in the House on the uh, opposite side has a degree um, anywhere close to what uh, Dr. Amy Acton has. And on the House side, we actually have two members that have a degree and a member that will be getting her degree this summer um, in this. So, and Dr. Amy Acton has 30 years of experience in this space, and she has diligently been talking to other health professionals um, around the state and other states um, as she's been looking at this, um, these trends coming out and, and, and looking at her decision making. Just uh, Representative Lisa Shebecki, um, 
we have some serious stuff to get to. I mean, the coronavirus, coronavirus deadlier in Lucas County than in the rest of the state. Uh, I know with your background and on the uh, Toledo Public School Board, you're very concerned about education. What are we going to do with our kids? Um, can you hang with me? I'm going to need to take a break. I'll be right Absolutely. back with more. This is Leading Edge. I'll be back right after this. We're back in Leading Edge with the State Representative Lisa Shebeke, Democrat, House District 45, Toledo. The coronavirus deadlier in Lucas County than anywhere else in Ohio. That's your turf, Lisa. Why so many deaths in the Toledo area, do you think? Well, I, I think it's a, a number of things. We have a high population um, of nursing homes in our area. And, um, and I, I know this question has been asked actually of Dr. Amy Acton, and she has been um, looking at that and working with our local health officials. But Jerry, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, our local leaders have stepped up mm -hmm. like I've never seen them before step up, um, looking out for um, Lucas County, looking out for Toledo ones. Uh, but we really need to um, examine this and look at this going forward. Um, uh, should the state university in Toledo, the university, should it be opening up for face-to-face -face education this fall? Well, I, you know, I know that um, our leaders out there in the university, as even our school leaders, are preparing for next school year without guidance um, at this point. My office has actually asked the governor and Dr. Amy Acton to give those guidances out sooner than later so they have an opportunity to be able to um, fully plan going forward. Um, but I'm sure that the universities, along with the school districts they're working through, they might have plan A, B, and C because of that unknown um, until we get to those fall time frames. Well, as a matter of fact, I hearken back to your experience on the Toledo Board of Education, uh, in which you would become president of the board. I mean, here are school districts, Lisa. Obviously, this would be the time here they're winding down a normal school year. We're winding down a very abnormal school year, looking ahead to the fall. And uh, there are questions, as you know, I do some work in the Bowling Green schools. Are we going to open on distance learning? Are we going to open face to face? What about transportation for all of this? And it's the kind of thing that I'm told we can't find this stuff out, Jerry, in late July, early August. So what can they do or do you expect that we're going to find something sooner than later at this point in time about schools, public schools? Well, and I think that coming down the road, you know, sooner than later, there is going to be some guidance out there. I know that there's a, a group of folks, I mean, the educator world that are working um, on a task force with the governor. I was reading actually an article in um, a newspaper um, earlier today uh, uh, in regards to that. So, but it, it's going to be difficult. And one of the things that we have to look at first is, you know, really transportation. If you're going to be open, yeah. how do buses um, operate in this different environment? We look at, around the city of Toledo and TARDA has what we call shadow busing um, to implement through that social distancing. Uh, we know that in our public schools, even in, in a regular school year, the beginning, um, there's a need for um, bus drivers, and there's been a shortage for a long time, even before this. So, yeah. I'm, you know, I, I've got some bills out there that I've introduced that would help shore up this and actually be a jump start to our economy, and hopefully, um, we can get those out of committee into the House floor. Much to do, and she is on it, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't even get to my UTMC question, which is huge, and we were talked about last week on the program. But you're out there, you're available. We can talk again, can't we? Absolutely. Anytime, Jerry. Um, I, I'm available at any time. I appreciate it. She is State Representative Lisa Shibaki, Democrat District 45. I want to thank her for keeping us on the leading edge of so much going on in Ohio government that affects all of us here in Northwest Ohio. Hey, folks, this week, you can go inside a restaurant and sit down to eat. But let's continue to be smart, okay? Uh, we are coming back slowly as an economy, but we need to do it intelligently. By the way, wearing a mask, folks, is more about respecting and protecting others. So let's be more respectful than so many in Columbus seem to have been lately. Have a great week, folks. See you next week on Leading Edge.